Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We are very excited uh, to welcome you to the Capital Area School Development Association College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. I have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. Please use the Q&A button um, as your way to interact with our presenters and ask any questions. You can direct your question to a specific school or multiple schools um, by including their name in your Q&A. You also um, will notice that your camera and microphone are off, so our presenters cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions that are happening, so be sure uh, to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is also being recorded, as are all the presentations. That way you can go back and you can watch this again, share it, or catch up with more schools um, that you might be curious to learn more about. And you can do that in about a week's time at that same website where you register. You can see that on the screen at strivescan.com slash C-A-S-D-A-N-Y. All right, well, I'm very excited to welcome our first school today. You're going to be hearing first from St. John's University. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for joining us today. My name is Albert Rodriguez. I work here in the admissions office at St. John's. I cover the state of Connecticut as well as um, the Hudson Valley area of New York. Uh, so we're gonna start with this short video. It's about three minutes long. We like to show it because it, it gives a good idea of our student life uh, as well as some of the opportunities that stem from studying like a place like St. John's. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this. one of the most heartwarming experiences to be able to be in a room with so many people for whatever event and all be working towards a common goal. Once you come through the doors of St. John's, you will fall in love with learning. You start to really build a connection with thousands of people that are here from all different walks of life. Being in the city but having your own campus, it's really cool. I love campus life. There's always people around. There's always something going on. It's a great place to fall in love with your passions. Small classroom settings are awesome. Sharing the love of one's discipline with the students, it's magical. That you're able to have a realistic view of how your work world will be. As you get that personal tie with a professor, and they're already in the field. The faculty are on your side. I still am learning, I love learning. Every day I get an email from them, they're looking for internships for summer, workshops for professionalism. That really gets you involved and gets you prepared. We have alumni who volunteer their time to spend a day with a student in their work environment discovering what it is that they want to do, asking for just a little bit of help as to maybe what direction they should pursue. They want to teach us, they want to watch us grow, they want to see us succeed. This is a place where service, academics, and the global opportunities really come together. We have global campuses recognizing that we attract students who are from all over the world. We believe everyone should have the opportunity to study abroad. And we want to see all of our students go independent of economic background, independent of major, while completing core curricular credits, serving the community, and advancing your degree. At St. John's, we make service fun and positive, and that's something that is just required for a course. The commitment to service, it's being driven by our hearts. We're committed to making sure that our students find value in the mission of the institution and so we work to embed it in everything that we do. The St. John's is a rich tradition of athletic history. 17 sport programs, highly competitive. Our teams compete against some of the top teams in the country. It's only $10 to get a ticket at Madison Square Garden. You can take the Red Storm bus. They get you there for free. The student section is right behind the hoops. Just a surreal feeling. You want to like just step back and like take it all in for a little bit. And they're on their feet, they're yelling, they're screaming, they're rooting for their Johnnies. Just the energy and the excitement that they have makes me excited. When you step foot in here, you are now welcomed into a family that will continue for the rest of your life. We have over 178,000 alumni, and majority of them are living here in the New York area, which allows us to bring them back to campus for presentations and mentoring and really to connect with our students. We are proud of the fact that our placement rate, which includes students that are either employed or pursuing graduate school within six months of graduation, is over 94%. I met all these great people that are now my best friends and 
I have faith that I'll be in contact with them until after graduation and beyond. St. John's has developed into more than a home for me. It's going to be emotional to leave, but it's easily been the best decision I've ever made in my life. Awesome. So we like to show that video because, like I said, especially from the campus experience, I think a lot of times students here in New York City and they think downtown Manhattan, whereas you can see by the photo, we're more of that kind of movie-esque university. So we're considered a medium to large university, our main campuses in Queens. Um, we do have a location in Manhattan, but that's more of an extension of the business school. So if you're interested in business, you'll definitely have the opportunity to finish your degree there. Um, and we also have the Staten Island location, which is more of a residential campus for the residents of Staten Island. Um, just some of the numbers, like I said, we are a medium to large university. We're not in downtown Manhattan, we're in the borough of Queens. Uh, one of the things we're really proud of is our student professor ratio, 17 to one. So there's no lecture halls. You're not taught by any GAs or TAs. Um, so you get that individualized attention throughout your process. Um, but you'll see underneath that, uh, it's a very lively campus though. We have over 180 clubs, 17 division one sports, intramural sports, um, fraternities, uh, faith-based organizations. So tons to get involved in. And like I said, it's a, it's a nice sized campus where sometimes you could feel like you're just a number in New York City, but becoming to St. John's, you really feel like you're a part of a community, but then you still get to take advantage of those opportunities. Over 100 in majors, over 100 majors offered, some of our more popular majors being business, education, health sciences, uh, um, homeland security, uh, and then the alumni network. You know, the video talked about the importance of bringing our alumni um, back to campus and, and working with our students, um, top internships, top companies. So really networking and utilizing the city to your advantage, meeting new people, getting your feet wet. Um, you know, that's really going to take you a long way. And the global experience, and I think I have about 30 seconds here. Um, so the global experience as well. I'm um, taking advantage of all those really puts you in, uh, you know, ahead of the competition when, it, when, it, when you're in front of a hiring committee. So uh, at St. John's, we feel like we give students all of those opportunities to succeed. Um, I just want to get, make sure that you guys have my contact information here. You can email me. Here's my desk number. And utilize this chat feature, stjohns.edu slash chat. Very helpful. Um, students and faculty like myself will be on there. So thank you for your guys' time. And um, sh shoot me an email if there's any questions. Thank you so much, Albert, for sharing St. John's with everyone today. Our next school that we'll be hearing from is the University of Alabama. Judy? Hey, Judy, we need to unmute. Don't worry, it happens to all of us on Zoom. I did it with my students the other day. Okay, I think I'm good. Yes, we're seeing the screen, so it should pop to presentation mode in just a second. And I'm hoping that it does. And oh, actually, it is. Yep, swap the presenter yep. slide view. Perfect. Yep, there it is. So as you can see, this is the University of Alabama, and we always greet and I always begin and end my presentation with Roll Tide. Uh, we are located in uh, the southeast, the southwest quadrant of uh, the state of Alabama. Uh, we are lo located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, which is approximately 45 to 50 minutes from the state capital of Birmingham. Our university was founded in 1831. And when it was founded, um, the university actually was built in the center of Tuscaloosa as Tuscaloosa was the state capital at the time. So we have a very rich tradition of Southern history. Oh, now I got to try, have to try to go back. Missed that one. Okay, so this is Tuscaloosa. Um, I love this slide. It is Tuscaloosa at night. It really gives the vibrancy of what the city is like. Uh, this is our downtown area. So you, as you see, we have a large embassy suites downtown. This is University Boulevard that runs the whole length of town and it goes all the way out uh, to where you pick up the next highway. Uh, we have shops, we have, um, we have hotels, we have boutiques, we have, um, we also have our Tuscaloosa Amphitheater, which is located right actually behind the embassy suites where some very famous uh, musicians have performed in our First concert in over a year will be premiering on June 16th, I believe. It will be John Party. And our Black Warrior River is seen in the distance. That's where our, um, our rowing teams, they compete and they practice. You can also rent kayaks and canoes to go out on it. There are several um, 
There's the Manderson Landing where you can run or walk right along the river and it really gives you that sense of um, having that water connection right in the center of campus. Um, next up, love to tell you about the type of students that do attend the University of Alabama. So as you can see, uh, we have 32,000 undergraduates on campus. We are 63% out of state. That means the chances of you bumping into somebody from New Jersey or New York are actually quite high. Um, and as you can see at the bottom of my screen, the top 10 Bama bound states, um, of course, Alabama is number one, but look at New Jersey and look at New York coming in hot and number eight and number 10 respectively. Each year, since I am the regional recruiter for Northern New Jersey and Greater New York, which is basically just the Eastern side of New York state, um, I send between 136 to 160 students each year from this area. So the likelihood of you bumping into someone that you do know from this area is high. Our freshman class. So this year's freshman class, even through this pandemic, uh, we had a very robust freshman class that had an average GPA of a 3.83 with an average SAT or ACT of a 1270 or a 27. We were test optional this year for the first time in, um, in history. And a little birdie told me that for next year, it is highly being considered. So just hold on to your hats. We should be there in a, a little bit. Once I know, believe me, I'll be publishing it everywhere that everybody knows that we are test optional. We are also top five in the amount of National Merit Scholars we have on campus in the nation. So these are just some of our majors, our Colleges of Arts and Sciences, of course, being our largest school, our Culver House College of Business being in, uh, ranked in the top 50 um, many, many years. Our accounting program is in the top 10. For our College of Communication Information Sciences, our PR program has been ranked nationally and it is the top um, educational program in the country. Yes, that means it is the number one educational program in the country for its major. Uh, College of Engineering, we are one of the few colleges that actually offer aerospace as a major and a minor. We also have added musical audio engineering this year and cybersecurity as two majors. Uh, our business school and engineering school, uh, we offer co-op opportunities. Uh, our Capstone College of Nursing is a direct admit to the lower division. You need to um, go through an interview process to get to the upper division. And we do have several uh, pre-professional programs as well as our social work major. Our Honors College, um, it is just that extra level that you would need if you have the qualifications, you apply, you write a very simple essay along with your application and you are admitted. Uh, the benefits are, a small, are small class sizes, honors residential learning community, you'd be able to live at Ridgecrest. You have an honors advisor as well as an advisor for your major. Um, you can attend a whole bunch of social events. Um, I know in the football stadium, if you are part of the honors college, you would be on the 30 yard line right down in front because it is, uh, seating is determined by GPA. And also we have a, a lot of um, community service and study abroad opportunities as well. Our campus life, this is what everyone wants to see. We have over 600 student organizations. We have the number one sorority recruitment class in the country. We have over 11,000 students who participate in sorority recruitment. So that only means that about 30% um, they participate in sorority recruitment. We also are the number two school in the nation for internship placement. That my folks is what your parents are gonna wanna know about. Just a sample of some of our dorms. We have suite style, we have traditional, and we also have what I call now the traditional hybrid, which is a double occupancy room with the bathroom inside of it. We are not just a football school anymore. We are a, a championship school, according to our basketball coach, Nate Oates. If you are uh, so, light, uh, so entitled, uh, let's uh, watch on Saturday as the Crimson Tide is in the Sweet 16. And I will page back on through here. If you have any um, questions, you, here is my email, here is my phone number. You can take a look at my lookbook um, and you can also make sure that um, you hit me up for any type of questions that you may have. Take awesome. care, roll tide. Thank you, Judy, so much for sharing the University of Alabama with us today. 
Our next school is going to be the Savannah College of Art and Design. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Chris Peterson. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission here at the Savannah College of Art and Design, uh, better known as SCAD. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen um, as well. So this way you can see exactly what uh, I'm looking at, but a lot of exciting things are going on um, in Savannah right now. Uh, SCAD right now, in case you didn't know, uh, is in fact the largest art and design school in the entire country. I have more than 15,000 students. Uh, we're spread out amongst two different campuses in Georgia. Uh, and we have more majors and minors in art and design than any other school out there right now. So what I did was I pulled up our website, scad.edu, because it has a ton of information for uh, prospective students that might be interested in SCAD. So first and foremost, if you're interested in learning about our locations, uh, what you should know is, um, you know, obviously we just heard from the University of Alabama, but we're gonna stick in the South. Savannah is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous city. The entire city is a national historic landmark district, which means the entire city has been historically preserved with buildings that were built before 1800. So it's an unbelievable city to live, work, and play in. And in Savannah, uh, we have over 80 buildings for our students down there. So when you think about the great classrooms that you have at your school, uh, imagine 60, 70 other buildings just like it. And for students interested in things like animation, fashion, film, game design, they actually have entire buildings to call their own down south. And better yet, these facilities are open 24 hours a day for them as well. Um, in addition to our campus in Savannah, uh, we also have a campus in Atlanta, Georgia. And if anybody has seen Atlanta recently, um, that city has exploded in popularity. Uh, there are more companies that are moving down there than ever before to start their businesses, move their headquarters. And what that's meant for our students is some really exciting um, recruitment opportunities. In fact, some of our largest recruiters have come from the greater Atlanta area. So last year, for instance, um, some of the companies that hired our students were CNN, Delta Airlines, um, Coca-Cola, and then literally right across the street from us is the headquarters of Cartoon Network. So uh, for students that want to go into uh, animation, they have a major, major studio right across the street that's recruiting a ton of our students um, as well. The important thing to know about SCAD is that when you are accepted here, uh, you are accepted to both of our campuses at the same time, which means you can pick and choose uh, which campus you'd like to be on quarter by quarter. So if you want to spend some of your first year in Savannah, then bounce over to Atlanta for a quarter or two during your second or third year, uh, you can make that transition as much as you like, as often as you like, and your cost, your tuition, all that is exactly the same. It never changes whatsoever. Uh, when we talk about our majors, I mentioned before, we've got more than 40 of them along with 75 minors. A lot of our majors you're gonna recognize from a lot of other art and design schools, uh, such as like things like graphic design and illustration and photography. Uh, but we also have majors here that you're not gonna find anywhere else because we're the only school in the country uh, that has some of these programs. So for instance, we have a program called Social Strategy and management because we're seeing a lot of uh, companies nowadays uh, that have in-house positions where you basically are responsible for designing their social media presence. Uh, so for instance, Coca-Cola, um, Abercrombie & Fitch, Anthropology, they all have in-house uh, teams that design all of their social media uh, campaigns and things like that. So this program will teach you how to basically design campaigns that are both stylish and effective for your companies. Even better, um, you'll actually learn how to design those social networks as well. So right now, students out of this program are getting recruited by companies like TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, uh, just to name a few. We also have a program called Themed Entertainment Design, where students literally learn how to design theme parks and roller coaster rides and stuff like that. 80% um, of the graduates uh, that have left that program are now working for uh, Disney and Universal Studios, just to name a few. So the important thing to know about SCAD is that we are a career development art and design school. We wanna give you a phenomenal arts education, but really the most important thing for us too uh, is that you have a career by the time that you graduate. So a lot of times we will sometimes create majors to support singular industries. So this way you can become a first destination for a lot of these companies that are hiring our students right now as well. Uh, really quickly, when we talk about the admissions uh, um, uh, 
policies, I guess you could say, uh, on that end. Uh, it's very, very straightforward. We do accept a common application. We also have our own application, which is right here on our website as well. Um, you can apply either or. Uh, we are rolling admission, so there is no early action or no early decision. You can apply whenever you'd like. Uh, and as soon as your application is complete, we'll go ahead and review it for admission. Uh, typically, on average, GPAs we typically see for most incoming first year students uh, usually hover between a 3.0, 3.2 GPA. Uh, average SAT SAT score is like a 1050, 1100. Uh, an average ACT score is like a 2122. Uh, for seniors, we were test optional this year for them. For juniors, uh, we, are, we have not yet made an announcement just yet uh, in terms of whether it would be test optional, but that should be forthcoming um, soon enough. And then we do also offer scholarships based on a couple different factors, um, obviously um, academic profile, but then also portfolios. Portfolios uh, count towards an additional scholarship opportunity. So absolutely give us a portfolio um, of your best work and that will get you a second scholarship that will stack together uh, with your academic scholarships um, as well. So you can learn all about that on our admissions website here. And then finally, real quick, please visit us. Uh, the best way to get to know some of these campuses obviously is to visit us and, and be able to see our facilities and talk to our faculty. So we, are, we actually just started doing in-person daily tours again. Uh, they're smaller groups, socially distanced, so this way you can come and actually see our facilities and things like that. Uh, and then starting next month, we're going to start doing our open houses. Uh, they're multi-day events now, smaller groups, again, masks, social distance and everything like that. But this way, uh, they're, they're you know bigger events where you can actually get a lot more out of those as well. And of course, you can come here to visit SCAD and sign up for all those different things. Um, as well. I handle all students that come from the state of New York. Um, so um, I'll, I'll put my information in the chat. So this way, if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me. I am also going to start traveling uh, through the state of New York next month. Um, so there might be a chance for me to come into your area and for us to meet face to face at a Starbucks, Panera Bread, whatever it may be, uh, to answer any questions that you may have as well. But thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, your time this morning. Hi, Jennifer, you're muted. <laughs> Thanks, I had something else pop up in front of it and I thought I got it. So thank you so much for popping in there. I appreciate it. It happens to everyone. Zoom life. All right, so our next presentation is gonna be the University of South Carolina. Okay. Wonderful, hello, welcome everybody. Let me get this slide up there. All right, there we go. We should all be seeing it now. Yes, all looks good. We can see you, hear you, and Perfect. the screen is set. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. We're running a little bit slow today, um, but it is so great to meet you. I know we only have about six minutes together right now, um, and my dog is finally being quiet. So we're going to try and get through as much information in six minutes as is humanly possible without me talking way, way too fast. But I will admit I am a New Yorker um, and I went to high school in the capital region. And so I talk a little bit fast, but I also know that you can keep up with me. So we'll get started. Um, obviously, the University of South Carolina is located in South Carolina. Um, specifically, we are located in the city of Columbia, which is the state capital. Um, it is located pretty much smack dab right in the middle of the state. For me, I think of Columbia and my time there is actually pretty similar and you can relate it a lot to the size of the Albany area. Um, the kind of greater metro Columbia area has about 800,000 people in it. Um, of course, that size gets a little bit bigger when our students move on campus in August and slightly smaller when students go home at the end of the year. But you can get an idea looking at that cityscape in the top right corner of exactly how big that is. Um, we have some wonderful museums, art galleries, a really great local music scene as well. We have one of the top 10 ballets in the country. Um, we're known for a lot of our really great festivals. Um, so we have great crawfish festivals, a Greek festival, Latin American, um, St. Patrick's Day. And if you can tell already, a lot of what we have revolves around food. Um, and I got to say, I don't hate it. Um, it is also lunchtime and I haven't had lunch yet. So one of the things I love to do is talk about our food. And in the South, 
we've got some pretty good food. And I am sure my colleagues from Alabama and SCAD will agree, food is pretty fantastic. And my colleague from A&M is going to have similar things to say when she hops on next. So in addition to that, Columbia is a prime location for internships, part-time jobs, and really just ways that would truly enrich your student life. Um, now hopping over to the real essence of what is important when you're looking at a college, obviously the academics. Um, but to kind of first start off, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, guys, um, looking at you know, what our school looks like. And so we are about 56% in-state students, 44% out-of-state. You know, those students from out-of-state are truly coming from all over. So um, New York State is actually one of our top feeder states, so the top states for students to be coming from. Um, this year, it is pulling in at number three. So we do have several hundred students that are coming down from New York every year. Um, I like to tell my boss that means that I've done a fantastic job spreading the word of USC, um, but at the same time, uh, it could also just be the fact that the university is great and stands on its own. Um, that was the case for me when I was looking to go to graduate school. Um, I think there is something about all of the opportunities, academic and otherwise, as well as that beautiful weather and a pretty consistent year-round temperature of about 72 degrees with an average of 222 sunny days kind of is a nice draw, especially when we've had some eh, not so great weather lately up in these parts. Um, we do have a really diverse range of students, not only where we're coming from, but ethnicities, backgrounds, belief systems, and it really will just enrich your student experience. Um, back on track with what I had started to say, um, the academic tracks in South Carolina are really unparalleled. We have a total of 300 different degree paths when you take into consideration the over 100 mi uh, majors plus 90-ish minors and concentrations. Everything from some of the more common majors of you know, biology, psychology, business communications, to some of those really specialty areas that you may or may not be already considering such as social work, pharmaceutical studies, sport management, uh, aerospace engineering. So kind of the moral of that story is that there are so many things for you to do, so many things for you to study that whether or not you come in thinking, I think I wanna study um, pharmaceutical sciences, you're going to have the opportunity to integrate things within your experience and classes that you're really going to be able to graduate with a whole new set of courses under your belt that will really help you, you know, increase employ employability, start out with those higher salaries, the things that we want to look forward to. A big part of that is all those opportunities to take what you're learning inside the classroom and truly apply it outside. Um, these are the internships, the study abroad, research, all of those ways that we really want our students to be learning. Um, because we don't want the first time that you use your everything you've studied in a book or heard in a classroom to be in your first job. Um, you think about it this way. If you are a, a nursing student, you don't want the first time that you draw blood to be your very first patient on your first day of work in a hospital. So uh, we want you to practice and get that experience along the way. By far, one of my favorite parts of my student experience was really embracing the school spirit. And it's not just down to our sports. It's the fact that everybody at South Carolina loves being at South Carolina. Um, we are also in the uh, March Madness Tournament. Our women's team is going for gold this week. Um, I'm going to pop my contact information in the chat. Um, definitely ask me any questions you have, either through the Q&A now or don't hesitate to reach out. I am here to answer anything that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kate, for sharing the University of South Carolina. All right, our next school to present is going to be Texas A&M Galveston. Um, and as we are, this is gonna be our fifth school today. 
and out of five. So this is a great time, students, to just enjoy this presentation, but also start thinking ahead to any questions you might want to put in that Q&A for our representatives and to get that chat information. All right, Yuri, I'd like to turn it over to you to present on Texas A&M Galveston. Howdy. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you and we can see you. Outstanding. So I'm going to start off with a video for y'all. Oh, but we don't have your screen shared yet. Okay, it's coming up right now. Great. Okay, so we'll head over to you. The ocean is a wondrous world, teeming with life, mystery, and adventure. Yet 95% remains unexplored. At Texas A&M Galveston, we teach and inspire through the tradition of Aggie values, tomorrow's marine scientists who explore, research, and protect our oceans, wetlands, shores, and sea life. Engineers whose careers can take them from land to the seas and the depths below. Business administrators who manage ports, shipping, and logistics around the globe and ships officers who sail the world transporting goods and people or serve our country in the Navy and Merchant Marine. Earn a degree from Texas A&M Galveston and unlock the career opportunities of the Earth's vast oceans. Texas A&M University at Galveston. Education, tradition, adventure. All righty. And, uh... We're gonna just watch one more video here. The highest starting salaries in the Texas A&M system are at Texas A&M University in Galveston. And one of the reasons for that is what kind of skills our students learn. Uh, where else in the state of Texas, or for that matter in the Gulf Coast, can you go to learn how to pilot a 400 ton tanker uh, or a tugboat? This, what you're gonna see here is basically a simulator coming into having something like this in our building um, that we have classes for. This is as close as you get to being on the water without actually being on the water. The motion you see behind you is an optical illusion that is presented purely through visual means. But the simulation is meant to present as many realistic hydrodynamic effects on the ship as possible. To have the backing of College Station and the entire system really makes us stand out. We are an ocean-oriented, ocean-focused campus. Everything that we do revolves around the water. And to be able to supplement what the system can offer and to be able to draw upon the resources to improve our offerings really makes this unique in a way no other academy can, can claim. And if you think it's easy, you hadn't been on this ship. I have and I've crashed it into the docks about six times in 30 minutes. All right. So once again, uh, howdy, my name is Yuri Mendez and I am a, a Maritime Administration, Business Administration major here at uh, Texas a and Galveston. Uh, I'm also in the uh, Master's of uh, Maritime and, uh, Administration and Logistics. I am an ambassador for the university and I wanted to share a little bit about what we do here. So we are Aggies by the sea. And uh, overall, overall, we're a cultural branch of Texas A&M University. Um, we're dedicated a lot in the marine sciences, technology, humanities, and maritime affairs overall. Um, here's a picture of our campus. Uh, we are located at, uh, um, in the Galveston area, um, right next on Pelican Island. Uh, so some of the degrees we offer are maritime engineering technology, a bachelor's of science, and that also a bachelor's of science in uh, marine transportation, uh, which is a video of uh, maritime business administration. There's the uh, master's of um, business administration and logistics, which I am in, and then we also offer marine biology, marine fisheries, marine resource management, marine sciences, as you can see, also marine um, or maritime studies, which is a coastal environment science society, um, our ocean, ocean engineering and university studies as well. On the ocean science side, marine biology uh, and marine fisheries, as well as marine sciences and coastal environmental sciences and, and societies, all of these offer a marine oriented um, approach uh, with marine biology. You offer a lot of broad uh, training in uh, general biology. We also look at zoology, coastal wetlands, ecology, 
uh, mammalogy and uh, aquatic animals and health. Uh, with marine fisheries, you're looking at uh, um, sort of branching out into the biological sciences uh, and an emphasis a lot on the management part of it, um, as well as marine sciences, sciences, which we're looking at uh, things like uh, geology, physics, biology, oceanography, and then applying a lot of that. Um, with the uh, coastal environmental sciences, uh, we look at uh, preparing students uh, with regards to environmental sciences, economics, and social issues related to the development of marine and coastal resources. With the maritime industry, we also have maritime business administration and maritime transportation, as well as marine engineering, technology, and ocean engineering. Uh, with maritime business administration, you look at a lot of the logistics side with uh, focus on the um, maritime um, as well as uh, maritime transportation, which again, you're looking at uh, getting a third uh, mate uh, unlimited license. Uh, our liberal studies focus also, we offer that, believe it or not, maritime studies. Uh, we focus on history, archaeology, literature, communication, and pol uh, politics as well. Um, so some of the minors we also offer are listed here, marine biology, coastal environmental sciences, and society something like uh, marine maritime studies and clinical laboratory, lab, laboratory sciences, which then we partner with UTMB, which is also located here in Galveston. And some of our other minuses include economics, anthropology, English, history, and the likes. Um, so some of our Aggie traditions here, we always say howdy, just like College Station. Um, we'll have Miss Revely as our mascot, and she is a five-star general. She is the highest ranking member of the cadets. Uh, we also have our uh, Aggie ring, which you also saw in the video. So some of our co-curricular um, activities, we have uh, undergraduate research honor program, studying abroad opportunities um, and the likes. And there's our new building for the cadets. Their license option offers uh, deckhand officers uh, opportunity to get, like I said, unlimited tonnage uh, license and uh, engine officers license programs. Your, hey, Yuri, we have um, come to the end of your six minute time. So I want to make sure we're able to get any of that information in the chat and um, share any last uh, contact slide or info that you have. So and... um, allow me to go to our very last. PowerPoint and share some of our info with us. We're going to be putting some links on the chat and uh, so you guys can get a hold of us. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing more about Texas A&M University Galveston. All right, so we've come to the end of the formal part of our presentation with these six by six presentations. Um, well, six by five, because we have five schools. And we wanted to make sure that all of our attendees can get that information from the chat to know how to follow up and contact more. And uh, we'd also like to um, just give everyone a few more minutes to think if they would like to put any questions in the Q&A button. So I'd like to right now invite all of our representatives, uh, one representative from each school to come back on screen. And we're kind of going to answer a couple um, Q&A round robin style questions. So I'm sharing the first question right now. We'll go in the same order that you presented. So we'll begin with St. John's University. As the representative in front of you finishes, please just feel free to turn off, uh, turn on your microphone and answer the question and we'll just kind of roll through um, everyone. So our first question is about a favorite event or a tradition on campus, something that's um, really special, um, fun, exciting um, to your student body. So uh, again, we're gonna start with St. John's. So Albert, take it away. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, um, one of the cool things um, I think that we do here at St. John's and just the overall experience, you know, having the city as a tool, um, but specifically our, our athletics. I'm a big, uh, a big college basketball fan. Unfortunately, St. John's isn't in the tournament this year. You know, I, I am watching your guys' schools go on and continue, but um, it's unique that um, our men's and women's basketball teams get to play half of their home games, usually the more competitive teams within the Big East at Madison Square Garden. So if you're a big fan of just, you know, uh, especially New York City sports or just, uh, you know, uh, important musical venues, Madison Square Garden is, is up there on places to visit. And our students get the opportunity to sit courtside right behind the basket. Um, and it's a fun environment, you know, getting to see the student body really involved in, in, the, in the athletic side of it. So I think the students enjoy getting to go into the city, getting to see the history that Madison Square Garden offers and really getting to sit, you know, courtside at one of the most famous arenas. So it's a, it's a really cool tradition and opportunity for our students and student body. Thank you. 
So at the University of Alabama, um, I will start off also with a sports metaphor tradition that we have. Um, before each game, um, people gather on the quad for their tailgates, which is like, I mean, I have been a diehard New York Giants fan my whole life. I, my husband has season tickets. I have been to this, I have been to MetLife. I've been to Giant Stadium. There is nothing like an SEC tailgate, nothing. I'm sure my, my, uh, yep, yep. Kate, Kate uh, from UFC, UFSC is nodding her head. Um, I mean, it is so true. There is nothing like it. Um, I was flabbergasted the first time I went. So we make it a full day. Not only are there tailgates, but there's the elephant stomp. There is the, um, the million dollar band comes out and plays um, all over. And then they all process um, over to the stadium and the chords of the crowds follow them. And then ultimately the team appears and they walk through what we call the walk of champions. And it is the, literally it is the front door to the stadium and it is lined with, uh, with fans. And you have Nick's coach, Nick Saban and the team, they just walk up and they are just cheered on by the student body and the fans. And it really is actually, I'm sitting right in front of where the walk of champions would be right there. Uh, it was newly constructed. Uh, it actually finished construction at the end of last year. Uh, because sadly, we did not have room for our 17th championship, so they had to reconstruct the whole walk. So now we have room for not only our 17th, but our 18th championship wound up being, um, being put in stone there. So that is one of our traditions. I love our honors week, which will be happening very soon, the first week of April, and um, we actually have an honors day where um, all um, students who are tapped into their honor societies come to a mound on campus, our honors mound, and they are tapped into either the 31 Club, named after our 1831, it's when we were founded, um, and a lot of it is secretive that the students don't know, and they are led to it, and they are inducted by somebody who means something to them. So it's a very special time on campus. Awesome, yeah. Um, so SCAD doesn't have Division One sports, so sadly our traditions are more um, uh, major related, but actually one of my favorite ones uh, is something that's actually happening this week, and it's called SCAD Style. Uh, if you think about New York Fashion Week, we basically have our own Fashion Week uh, down on our campus in Savannah, where the entire week is just uh, symposiums, Q and A's with invited guests and designers, uh, and then it ends actually with a fashion showcase uh, from our senior class, where we actually bring in um, recruiters from major fashion houses, retailers, um, all of our models that walk the runway are SCAD students that have been trained from by Miss J Alexander from America's Next Top Model. Um, so it's a really really awesome event for our fashion students. And interesting enough, we do the same type of event for game students, film students, theater students. Uh, throughout the year as well. Um, and this year, I should mention too, for the first time ever, SCAD style is actually open to the public for free because a lot of it's being done um, virtually. So you can actually go to our website, scad.edu, just look up SCAD style and you can get all the registration links uh, for all those talks and events and things like that. So definitely check that out. But yeah, it's one of my favorites uh, throughout the entire year. Um, all right, well, I Sorry, my dog is trying to join us right now. Um, Chris, I have to say, I just wrote that down because that sounded super cool. And now I really want to join and get to check it out. Um, so, all right, I'm going to try and go opposite and not do something athletic related because of course, you know, yes, we are D1 school. We do have athletic traditions, but um, as well, we also have just some really little quirky ones. So if you don't know, our mascot is a Gamecock. Um, so this is, this is what he looks like. His name is Cocky the Gamecock. Um, and we are very, very serious in telling people he is not a chicken. He is a rooster. Um, and like, we will go to the mat with somebody and say like, he's not a chicken. Um, but the kind of like opposite side of that is that, you know, um, every Wednesday, every dining hall on campus will serve chicken fingers. And we have Chicken Finger Wednesdays across campus. Um, and it's just kind of one of our like quirky little student traditions. So I always tell students, if you're going to visit campus and you visit on a Wednesday, plan to eat on campus because we have some of the best chicken fingers that you can ever find. Um, and it is just one of those weird little things that we have. It's not related to anything else. Um, and we even switched food providers a few years ago. And 
rumor has it it was written into their contract that they must serve chicken fingers on Wednesdays. Um, Yuri, you are up to uh, share for Texas A&M Galveston. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So um, some traditions we have, um, one of the very important ones I mentioned um, was the Aggie ring. Um, the Aggie ring is, you know, something that uh, after taking so many hours um, on campus and, and whatnot, and having a certain GPA, you are qualified to uh, get your Aggie ring. And your Aggie ring represents not just your academic achievements, but also, you know, um, a lot of the Aggie, Aggie traditions that go along with it. Um, it. It's also a symbol, not just of your academic achievement, but you're coming into a broader family as you graduate. Um, we know we have a really strong association of uh, former students, um, which is worldwide and very well known. And so, you know, that ring um, isn't just, again, a, a symbolic thing, but it really does open a lot of doors for students. Um, we also have Miss Reveille, I mentioned, who's a rock collie. Um, she is uh, the highest ranking member of our Corps of Cadets. Um, it is said that if you are taking an exam and she comes into the classroom and barks, well, that exam is canceled for the day, but uh, it's just one fun fact. Um, we also have, we all, everyone says howdy, just like we do in College Station. Again, we are part of College Station, but I'm a, more of a maritime focus, therefore we call ourselves the Sea Aggies. Um, we do also have, um, uh, big events, which is something really big um, on campus. All students get together um, and we have an impact, impactful um, service uh, uh, event in our community, whether that's, you know, repainting uh, homes or, or picking up trash or whatever it may be. We are always focused on servant leadership here on campus. So. Mm. I love hearing all of these because, you know, every campus has special things in the classroom, outside the classroom, you know, whether it's sports or service or just community. And then those like just fun, little quirky, unique things that kind of bring everybody together. So I hope for everyone watching, you might be thinking, oh, I wanna look up, read more about some of these traditions or attend um, a virtual event uh, like Kristen's dad mentioned. But I know that all of the campuses are having a lot of different virtual programming and ways you can, you know, engage from afar, or maybe get an extra inside peek that a student might not normally get, even if you just do an in-person visit, because you can't be there every day. So um, I hope it inspires everybody to think, oh, maybe I could see myself there um, on campus. Um, well, we have reached the end of our time together today. So first of all, thank you to all of our panelists for sharing not just the facts and figures and those logistical details of admissions, but your just obvious passion and excitement for the student experience in and out of the classroom on your campus. For everyone who's watching, whether live or virtually later, um, we hope that this has piqued your curiosity and you are thinking, oh, you know what? I want to learn more. I want to connect with these counselors. I want to ask questions um, and see if this campus community could be your next home um, as you pursue your experience in higher education. Um, so now that we are closing out, when you close your window, there's going to be a link to a very quick four questions all right. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. I promise it's really short. Um, this is also just one of many sessions that are being hosted. So we hope that you've attended others and will sign up for additional sessions to come. In about a week's time, you'll be able to find this session's recording, um, as well as all the other session recordings at that same website where you registered. And that, as you can see on the screen, is strivescan.com slash C-A-S-E-A-N-Y. So thank you again, everyone, for your time today. We really appreciate it. And best of luck and have fun in your college search decision and journey to find your next academic home. Bye, everyone.